Hey everyone, today I want to provide you all with some simple tips to help you out with super telephoto photography. For today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I got some crisp photos of the moon using this setup right here. So I'm using a Tamron 150-600 G2 lens with the new Tamron 1.4 teleconverter to effectively give me a focal length of 850 millimeters. My goal is to get a large picture of the moon, so I decided to use a Nikon D7200 crop sensor to pull me in even closer to the moon instead of using a full frame sensor and then cropping afterwards. I noticed it wasn't as sharp when I cropped in with my D800. So instead I used the APS-C sensor which added another 1.5 magnification to my 850mm focal length so it's like having a 1275mm lens. Now before I talk about my camera settings I want to share with you some important tips to ensure you get the sharpest image possible. First, weigh down your tripod with a camera bag or by some other means. When dealing with super and extreme telephoto pictures, the slightest amount of wind can affect your photos, so by adding weight, you'll help prevent unwanted shakiness. Secondly, if you're pushing a shutter button with your finger, you're most likely causing unwanted vibrations. Try using a shutter release cable or timer mode. In some cases, the mirror slap in your DSLR may cause shake, and you might want to use mirror lockup mode to stop that from happening. Lastly, I recommend using a fast shutter speed, even if you're on a tripod. Subtle vibrations at extreme telephoto focal lengths are very noticeable, so you want to mitigate that from happening. A good starting point is to make your shutter speed equal to your focal length. For example, if you're shooting with a 600mm lens, make your shutter speed 1 600th of a second. Then find your optimal aperture for the sharpest image possible. If your ISO is too high and noisy, then lower your shutter speed a little bit as long as it still maintains sharpness. I'm going to show you an easy way to reduce that noise uh, later on in this video. Okay, so here I have 15 photos of the moon. 14 of them are raw photos, and the 15th photo is a stack of, the, of those 14 raws. Which I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment, but first I just want to talk about my camera settings. As you see here, my focal length was 850 millimeters with the lens and teleconverter combined. It does not take into account that I used a crop sensor, so really it puts me over 1200 millimeters. I originally took my test shots at a higher ISO and a shutter speed of 1 1,000th of a second to determine the sharpest f-stop for my lens, which happened to be f11. f14 was pretty similar, but f11 was a hair sharper and allowed me to take in more light. Anything over f14 was considerably softer, and uh, same thing if it was under f11, it was not as sharp. The next thing I wanted to do was lower my shutter speed a little bit so I could lower the, the ISO. I settled at 1 800th of a second since I planned on cropping in on the final image, and my ISO was at 640, which is pretty clean on the Nikon D7200. Now some people might be satisfied with this result, however I want to crop in tighter, so I want as little of noise as possible, and noise reduction software will smooth it out, but I will lose sharpness. So I decided my best option was to stack the photos, which would help me to re uh, achieve the results that I wanted. I took 14 consecutive photos using my camera's built-in into volometer. I took one photo every two seconds, and you might be asking why two seconds? Well, I noticed that the mirror slap was causing some vibrations at that focal length. So two seconds gave my camera enough time to recover from the vibrations. Now let's get into uh, the stacking aspect of this. Okay guys, so I'm gonna select my 14 photos and I'm not gonna do any edits other than getting rid of the chromatic aberrations. Next we wanna go to photo edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, so once you have your moon images in Photoshop, let's zoom in a little bit. We need to align them since we're dealing with the movement of the earth and the movement of the moon, as we see here. So select all your photos, and then what we want to do is go to uh, Edit, Auto-Align Layers. 
and then hit OK. Alright, so you could check them and they look pretty good. As I click this I to turn it off and on, they seem pretty lined up. Don't worry about the the blank space around the edge. We could just crop that out later. So now that the moon pictures are all lined up, we want to convert them to a smart object um, by going to Layer, Smart Objects, Convert to Smart Object. Okay, so now we have our smart object and what we need to do is reduce some noise and by doing that you're going to go back to layer smart objects and go to stack mode now you have two options here that will reduce noise mean or median i'm going to choose median uh, the only reason i'm doing this is because i did a test earlier and i noticed that median reduced the noise and also maintained just a little bit of sharpness when i pixel peeped it uh, but do some tests of your own. You might find that one works better than the other. Some of you might not notice any difference at all. So um, just pick one and this will reduce the noise. All right, so that's it. So now all we have to do is flatten the image and then hit File, Save, and bring it back into Lightroom, which I already have the one in Lightroom. So I'm just going to close this for now and hit Don't Save. Okay, so now we're back in Lightroom, and these last two images are the images I want to focus on. The one all the way to the right is the new stacked photo of 14 images, and this is just one single raw photo. So before I zoom in and show you the differences, um, which are subtle because, again, 640 ISO is pretty low, so uh, the, the results aren't drastic. But imagine this was, um, you know, a half moon or a quarter moon. The less light that this moon is giving off, the higher that ISO number is going to be. So this technique is definitely going to benefit you as this moon gets darker and darker. So let's just do a quick basic edit to this. Um, the white balance looks good right off the bat. I just want to up the contrast a little bit. And I'm going to apply the same, the same exact setting to both of these images. Um, I'm just going to leave everything else the same. Uh, let's go to sharpening. Put this up to 60. And that's all I'm going to do for now. I might mess around with, with clarity, but uh, for this tutorial, let's just see what we got here. Okay guys, so at one to one, you can't really see too much of a difference. Um, the one on the right to me looks a little sharper. And if we zoom in, we can see, yeah, it's definitely sharper and cleaner with less noise. Let me scroll down. This is what I really wanted to capture, these craters. And look how beautiful that is. As you see, the one on the right that we stacked, really sharp, a lot less noise. I could crop this photo pretty heavy and sell it relatively large and still uh, maintain clarity and low noise. You know, I wouldn't be comfortable going too large with this photo on the left. It's just, you know, even at 640, there's noise there. So it limits how much I could crop in on this image. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased how this came out. I think you guys should definitely try out stacking. And, uh, you know, for a teleconverter, I'm pretty impressed too because they tend to degrade the quality a little bit. So um, I'm pleasantly surprised of the sharpness I was able to get out of this lens combination. This is that new G2, you know, 150 to 600 Tamron and the new 1.4 teleconverter. I'm actually in the process of testing the 2x converter, but I don't think it's going to be as sharp as the 1.4. So, yeah, 
Look at the shadows, they're really good. Yep, everything looks awesome. So give this technique a try, and uh, definitely the first things first, make sure you have a good solid focus on the moon or whatever you're shooting that's really far away, and um, then practice stacking because it will take your photography to the next level. So I hope this helps, guys. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Bye.